I'm now joined by Tennessee's head baseball coach, Tony Vitello. Coach, about to enter your seventh season here at Tennessee. If you could go back, what would you tell 2017 Tony Vitello about this new adventure he was about to go on? <laughs> Maybe calm down a little bit so you, you stay in all the games. Uh, but also to be patient. It's a process of getting a little bit better in each area possible. Um, we've done it with our staff year in and year out. The administration's helped us hire people. Uh, the facilities improved bit by bit. Uh, we've done better managing the roster. And, you know, in, in this league, everybody wants success right away, especially the fans. And, and we're that ambitious, too. But it's a process. And um, we're still working through things and trying to find our best version of Tennessee volunteer baseball. And then ultimately want to get to a point where the challenge is, can you repeat that? Um, but for now, having fun and, and enjoying the progress. You talked about that process. How have you grown not only as a coach, but as a person here at Tennessee? I think as a person, the thing that stands out is just getting roots here. Um, being from the Midwest, spending time in Texas and other spots, but never really being in this part of the country. Um, for recruiting purposes, number one, familiarizing yourself, but also with, this is a school based on strong traditions and strong loyalty. And uh, you can't fake it. People will, will sniff that out in a hurry, especially when they're as authentic as Tennessee people. So I think for our staff and myself personally, truly getting roots here and uh, really becoming what it is to be a part of Tennessee, be a VFL, if you will, um, ha has been huge. Four regionals, three super regionals, two World Series appearances, over 30 players drafted to the MLB in just six years. Maybe it's one of those I just said, but what are you most proud of? Who? that's a tough one. I know the one I'm most frustrated by, because you're, you're mentioning some of those, and the 2020 team falls without a lot of accolades, other than we, we did have several draft picks. Garrett Crochet goes straight to the major leagues, but that is certainly the most frustrating. I think the most pleasing is to see that bond between our players and the community, um, and that could mean the community here in Knoxville. It could mean just the baseball community. There's certainly a lot of people anytime you know, we've had some success. Anytime you do that, you kind of want some haters, as they say out there, because if you don't have any, that means you're not very relevant. Um, but there's been also been some people that really appreciate the way our guys have done some things. Um, and little kids have become a fan and model themselves after a, a Chase Dolander or doing things that Drew Gilbert did on the field. It's kind of fun when you go watch high school games and you literally see them emulating our players. So it's, um, you know, it's our goal to make sure all, as many of those things are positives. Um, but from, from my standpoint, I feel like our kids have really you know, created a bond with the community in a lot of different ways that's been positive. I know that's something you wanted to create, that culture within the community between your players and this Knoxville community. For you to see how that has grown from when you first got here to now, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's hard to really comprehend because we'll watch old games. Coach Elander just pulled up one the other day where it was our first season. It was an SEC game. The weather was fine. It wasn't gorgeous out. And there was nobody in the stands. And there was probably more people after our last home game here in the parking lot just waiting for autographs than there was in the stands for that particular game. And so, um, you know, you want to leave a place better than when you found it. And you want to know that you're influencing others, not just doing everything for yourself. And I think our players and coaches realize that um, we've made some strides in both those areas here with, with that attachment the fans have for our kids. And um, it, it makes it easier to cheer for the players when you have a personal relationship with them and you watch them grow up and you see different things they do in the community like a Kirby. Um, it, it, it creates that, that sense of loyalty grows from that. You just said the word loyalty. Your dad worked and coached at the same school for over 40 years. You talked about loyalty in your introductory press conference back in 2017. You said you're going to be loyal to the volunteers. What did he teach you about loyalty and why is that word so important to you? Uh, I, I think that no one is more important and no one has it better than the people that you're surrounded by. And. Uh, you know, uh, maybe with him it was it was more discipline and, and straightforward type of things. I've kind of gotten more into the mental aspect of things. Um, but if it's something you believe, you know, with your mindset or your mentality, then it's true. And so I, I think I've stolen that from my entire family is uh, keep the ones that are around you close to you and realize that no one's got it better than you. And uh, so why are you worried about what other people are doing um, or what else might be out there for you and things like that. And um, really to kind of put a blanket over all that is 
I was more eager, I think, than people really realized to be a head coach um, at a young age. I thought it would happen quicker, to be honest with you. Um, but there was a lot of people that did not want to give me an opportunity for whatever reason. Um, and it wasn't just one person here that kick-started the interest uh, between myself and Tennessee. And it certainly wasn't just one person um, that hired me here. And the bottom line is I'm forever loyal to the entire university for being able to sit here with you right now. Your loyalty to the program has in turn created loyalty from the fan base. You talked about how there you know, weren't many fans in the beginning. Now when you look out and you see it's standing room only, what does that mean to you? Um, it's fun. Uh, it it kind of makes me envious. I'd like to be out on the porches with some of those people because it's a party. Um, but the entire SEC is a party. Uh, you just kind of, kind of, I don't know what the right analogy is, but you got to kind of open the can and, and, and let it all spill out. And, and once our fans saw that this is high level baseball, it's incredibly entertaining. Uh, regardless of the score, uh, I think our guys will play hard and compete the way they want them to. Um, and they're going to see some dramatic moments. And uh, I, I don't know how we've gotten this many in this short a time, but there's certainly been plenty of those. And, and so it's created this kind of storybook vibe. And you, you, I hate bringing up the pandemic, but you mix in kind of how the fans were finally able to get back outside and do things. And our players performed kind of at the right time for them. Um, all in all, again, storybook is the best word I can, I can think of. I think that's one word. But regardless, I think so too. <laughs> but regardless, I think that's kind of what it's been. And, and you pinch yourself. You don't want it to go away. Um, but at the end of the day, getting back to my roots with watching my dad go to work at the same place every day, all you can do is come to work every day. And certainly you need to enjoy it. But also you need to get a little better every day. And so we've tried to encourage our players to follow that theme. And I think if they do, then we'll have some more dramatic moments for the fans. Do you have a favorite dramatic moment? I, I really don't, and I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm kind of a weirdo, like the Drew Gilbert home run. I don't think I watched that till about two years later, really from start to finish. Um, it was really interesting how that evolved. There was, that was a team effort. There were some really good at-bats before that at-bat. So I'd seen parts of it. Um, but I don't know, I try not to get too caught up in what's happened and focus more on a little what's in front of me. But as coaches, I know from my dad and other ones that I look up to, like a Coach Barnes, or um, he introduced me to Coach Izzo, we need to do a better job of enjoying those fun moments. And you know, one that really stands out is we went to a tournament where my family kind of turned it into a family reunion. And our team played very well, which means we also won a couple games. And uh, just to have something for them to rally around, like our fans, and for it to go well, um, it meant a lot. When you walk into this facility every day, what goes through your mind? Uh, what, can get, what can be better? What, what can get going in, in an even better direction for us or, or create more momentum? And uh, like I said, I think we're a long way from really accomplishing what we want to. And we're certainly not settled I mean, even as we sit here in this room, um, the furniture is changing and, and will be updated and improved for the fans to experience on game day in this room alone. Um, fortunately, the, the, the construction isn't loud right now, but typically you hear all kinds of stuff going on down there, down the left field line, and then there'll be more construction in the summer. So um, it, it's nice to not be static uh, in general, but to have kind of this momentum pushing forward in a lot of different areas is fun. and it. It, it kind of wakes you up and, and says, I better keep pace with everything else that's going on um, or I won't be doing my part. Your players, they all describe you as a player's coach. Why is that player-coach relationship so important to you? Um, I don't know. Um, it makes me feel like a wuss sometimes or, you know, relative to a, a Bob Knight or, or certainly, like I mentioned earlier, my dad was uh, very disciplined and very structured. And, and I think we create structure with our guys uh, with their work habits and what's required of them. But if they accomplish those tasks and they're on board with what we ask them to do, which again, I feel is very demanding, they've earned the freedom to be who they are and to have flexibility and to do certain things. And um, at some point, they're gonna have to take ownership of our locker room, of our dugout, of our season, uh, of a postseason run. That's when it's time for the players to do their thing. We do need to put them in the right position and make some decisions. But if that's going to be the case, then we, we might as well fast forward the process and make sure that they're, you know, taking on responsibility, holding each other accountable, and also just staying true to who they are. It's so difficult this day and age with, I hate to get too preachy, but you know, you look at someone's Instagram, it's like, oh, they're, they're leading the greatest life ever. You, you, you can get kind of caught, caught up in things that maybe, um, aren't true or aren't reality. 
And I think it's so important for these guys in real life, but also to be the best version of themselves as a baseball player, just be comfortable in their own skin and be true to who they are. And uh, it'll add peace of mind. And that way, when you go back to the locker room and you either won or you lost, um, I, I think you'll be better, living a better life. I know you focus on the moment, the task at hand, but just going back to last season, you talked about how proud you were of that team when you were about to leave for Omaha, just because of all the adversity they faced and how they overcame it. Why will that season, that team stick out to you? I think it'll stick out that, um, you know, if, if personally um, myself, but also our, our program and the people around us, if we can survive that year and, and have that level of success in the end, then you can survive anything. Um, because there was a lot of distractions and different things that went on and frustrations and um, there was talent, maybe us not putting in the right position or living up to billing. And um, there were so many times when it could have went apart and it took longer than we wanted to for it all to kind of work and come together the way that it did. Uh, but I think it did do that because we just kept trying everything and you just had a lot of people consistently having conversations. What if we try this? What if we did this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't I, why am I not doing this? And uh, it was almost like trying to put together a Rubik's cube, which I don't know that I could really do one of those, but I feel, <laughs> I feel like with our team, um, it was, it was, it took us a while to get it, but we got those panels either lined up all on the right side or pretty close to it. What did that season prove about Tennessee baseball? Um, you know, I don't, I don't read things um, or, or worry about, you know, a lot of writers, n no, no offense, but some people are just trying to make a name for themselves or make something bigger than it is. And um, there's stuff that's not really relative to what we're trying to do out here. So I don't really try and pay attention to things. Um, but if it's loud enough, it's going to get to me. And I think a lot of people felt like our program peaked out in 2022 last year when we started to struggle a little bit. And uh, I think if anything, it was good that we were able to check another box. We won a game in Omaha, which we had not done. Um, but we did a lot of other things too, just to make sure that the program keeps forging ahead. And again, I, I wanna beat Mississippi, Mississippi State, South Carolina, whoever, um, but there's a long list of SEC programs that have done more in the last couple decades than we have. They have a stronger overall tradition. They're in a better spot, whether it be with their facilities or whatever um, than we are. So we have to keep pushing forward, like I was talking about earlier, and to have a year where we would go backwards or stay you know, stagnant or in the same spot would have been, it would have been more than detrimental. And last year, again, to use that phrase, we were just put a blanket over last year um, we push through a lot of things and we continue to push forward as a program and it'll help us in the, in the years to come. Looking forward now, the season's right around the corner. You have a mix of veterans, guys returning, some new faces. What should we expect in 2024? I think a fun group, uh, a group that um, kind of what created this thing again. I, I think some of the magic moments are a byproduct of our guys working hard and feeling the vibe from the fans at home or even on the road and kind of being close and bonded in the dugout so they fight to come back uh, from a, a deficit or things like that. I, I think all that is deeply rooted in um, a group of guys that work hard together and have fun together and have a lot of personality. And I don't know where we're at, where we're at on the talent scale. And with the pandemic kind of flushing out, I really have no idea where the rest of the league is on the talent scale. You know it's gonna be good. Um, so I don't know about results, but I do know approach and what's gonna be seen on the field is gonna be uh, fun. And there's gonna be a lot of personalities I think our fans will fall in love with, kind of like they've done in the past with others. You're about to be very busy, um, but if you could have one day where you had a clean slate, what would, it morning tonight look like? What would you be doing? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if we can say that out loud. <laughs> but the, the number one thing that sticks out, and I don't do it here in Tennessee, which is crazy, I would be on a boat. I can tell you that. Um, I, I certainly would start the day with some music and probably end of the day with, with some music, whether it be live or uh, Sterl the Pearl DJing, or I just got the, the, the Spotify going. Uh, that would be the beginning and the end, and somewhere in the middle, um, that is my favorite thing to do is to go out on the water, especially if it's international waters and you got bad cell phone reception. 
Um, so, and you know, it's 24 hours in a day. If you're only giving me one, I'm not going to sleep. We'll sprinkle in some other stuff, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that off the record for now. Sounds good. We got to get you a boat down the Tennessee River before I know, the that, season starts. The, the, time, the time will come. The time will come. Awesome, Coach. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.